Praise God, praise God. Today, today's lesson, today's lesson was almost uh, very, it could have been really called kingdom business, but because what it is, the way the Holy Spirit gave me the lessons today, um, it's kind of like a, a, a purpose for us to self-evaluate. The scriptures I've given, I'm start with uh, Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5 is where we'll start today. So turn to chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5. The lesson says, to be a beacon, to be a beacon in the midst of chaos. Now, I think we can agree right now. Uh, can we agree right now? The world is in chaos. If, if, the, if the world wasn't in chaos before, it's really in chaos right now because the world, the world is walking in fear. The world, not us, the world is walking in fear. That's why we have to make sure we're in the world, but not of the world. That phrase, this, this is the epitome of that statement. We're in the world, but we are not of the world. We are not a part of the fear because we don't walk in fear. We're in the fear. Fear is all around us, but we don't walk in fear because God did not create a spirit of fear, but of love, power, sound mind. That's what we are. We're in love, power, sound mind. The world is in fear. We're in love, power, sound mind. We're in the secret place of the Most High. The world is in chaos. We're in the secret place of the Most High, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. That's where we live on Psalm 91 Street. If you're looking for the fellowship, I say it every day. We live on Psalm 91 Street. So don't even, don't even, don't have to look for us. I'll tell you right now, this is where we are. Psalm 91 Street, if you're looking for this fellowship and all the followers of Christ, we cannot let the world bring us down. We cannot let the world come into your life and steal your joy, your peace, your, 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 your comfort in Christ. We can't let the world come in. And how do we do that? Capture every thought. Capture every thought that's not like God. As soon as you feel something negative come into your mind, rebuke it, bind it, cast it out. And we got to... We're going to have to do this every day, all day, because it's on the news all day long. Now, now I want to make sure we, we do make sure some people, some people say, I just stopped watching TV completely. Now, we don't want to stop watching completely because we do need to know what's going on, but we don't need to listen to it over and over again. We need to get the news to know what's going on, but you don't need seven hours of news. In the first 30 minutes, you know everything that's happened that day. And then they keep replaying the same news over and over. So now if you're walking in fear and you keep hearing fear six hours straight, guess what? You're going to be walking in fear because you're embedding fear. We don't need six hours of news. We get the news we need in about 30 minutes, 45 minutes. We got all the updates for that day. And now go on about your business. Work, work on, on your peace of mind of the joy of the Lord and things of God. And as you, if, you, if you're working at home, just as you work at home, keep the peace of God in you as you work at home. Don't let the fear of the Lord come into your life, into your home. You're at home for safety. Enjoy that peace. Enjoy more time with God. And if you're working at home, you got you can set up your own environment. Have some have some mellow prayers playing, or as you're working at home, feed your spirit. You're not at the workplace, and now there's nobody to say turn that praise music off. You can't say praise God in here. See, because you're working at home, you can set up whatever atmosphere you want. You can just have praise music playing all day as you work at home, unless you're on the phone, of course. So these are ways we can use this this quarantine to increase our praise, our worship, our God time. You see, we're already, we're doing really good. This is day 24. We're in day 24 of the 40 day fast. We're past the halfway mark. Day 24, that's where we are right now. And see, we've been fasting and praying for those who've been fasting and praying for Lent when we started the 40 day fast up until a, a, a Resurrection Sunday weekend. We've just been focusing on more time with the Lord anyway. And so these are things we keep doing. We keep doing, keep seeing his face because we're already fasting and praying. Before the quarantine, we started fasting and praying before all the chaos went out of control. So we, we're in the perfect mindset of already fasting and praying and now just to continue doing what we're doing. It's a perfect, it's a perfect atmosphere, especially in chaotic times. Fasting and praying helps keep the fear out. It keeps the worry out. It keeps all the chaos out. 
Now, the reason this is titled Be a Beacon, you may know a lot of people who are friends, uh, co-workers, family members who are walking in fear, not like you. See, when you're a beacon, a beacon draws other people to it. In, in a world of chaos, we are to be beacons. We've got the peace of God in us. We don't have the fear. So when somebody comes next to you and they feel your peace, they're curious. How can you be so peaceful at a time like this? How, 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 can you, how come you're not stressing out? Because you got the peace of God. You're being obedient to his word, being anxious for nothing. I keep my mind stayed on the Lord. I'm being obedient. Isaiah 26, 3. I keep my mind stayed on him because I trust him. I know God's in charge. I know God's got this. So I trust him. So these are ways we're being a beacon. By doing what we sing, this, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Through good times, bad times, challenges, attacks, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're going through. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And people see the light. People see the light. They don't understand it. They have no idea what they see in you is the light of the Lord. And they see your love. And they see the love just, oh man, what, what is it with you? They, they might even say that to you. What is it with you? And it's just your, it's your joy in the midst of chaos. Your joy of the Lord. Your love for the Lord. Your peace beyond understanding. They see it, but don't understand what it is. But they want to be next to it. They don't have peace in their life or joy. They got fear. And they come next to you and feel your peace, your joy, your love. God's light all over you. And they don't even know that's why they're drawn to you because they feel the love of the Lord all over you. The anointing jumping off you onto them. They don't even understand why, why they're feeling better. If the anointing is jumping off you onto them to help them hold some peace. And they don't even understand what happened. They don't even understand when they leave you, why do they, why do they feel peaceful after they leave you? Because your anointing jumped on them and they don't even know what happened. They don't even know what happened to them. They got blindsided by the Holy Spirit. The anointing jumped off them and they got blindsided by the anointing. They jumped off of you because they came in contact with you. That's why we be, we focus on being beacons. Now, the reason I said turn to chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5. Now, in my Bible is subtitled, Be Im Imitators of Christ, Imitators of God. Chapter 5, Ephesians. Now I'm gonna go. Th I'm gonna go through the ver through the chapter. Now what I want to, what I want you to do. I'm going for verse one, one to twenty one, one to twenty one, because I because I, I talked about marriages in a different lesson. So right now we're focused on verses one through twenty one of Ge of Ephesians five. Now as I read this about how how we be imitators of Christ, as I read each verse what we should be doing, I want you to self-evaluate and say to yourself, have I been doing that? Oh, I need to do a little bit more of that. I need to do that. So this is kind of a self-evaluation self, self lesson today. I'm reading two different chapters, that of chapter five, first Ephesians. So as I read this, reflect on yourself and are you doing the best you can to be an imitator of Christ? And if you are, that's what makes you a beacon because you're living the word like we sing, living by the word that we're doing, amen? Okay, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up an offering, a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. And there must be no filthiness, nor silly talk, or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks. For this you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an adulterer or has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one, let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers of them. For you were formerly darkness, but now you're light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. 
for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Do not do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is great, it is disgraceful even to speak of these things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by light, and everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise making the most of your time because the days are evil. But so then do not be foolish, but understand what is the will of God and do not get drunk with wine for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speak to one another in, in psalm and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. And be subject to one another in fear of Christ. Stop right there. See, these are half, half of this we are doing just by coming to fellowship every day. Verses, verses 19 to 21, that's talking about us in fellowship. We're doing that in fellowship, live or archive. It says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. That's what we're doing every day in praise and worship. Giving thanks, all, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of the Christ. When we come together in fellowship and with two or more that gathered all in his name. Now, this is the first thing. Now, this is our goal. This is our goal. Now, if you if you heard some of those things and you say, well, I need to work on that. I need to work on it. Don't feel convicted. Don't feel like a failure. No one, excuse me, no one is perfect. So if you if you heard the verses and you said, oh, you know what? I need more of that right there. Oh, you need I need I need to correct that right now. You know, and that's all right. We, we're, we're works in progress. Let me say that again. We are works in progress. No one is perfect. You're going to make a mistake. The flesh is not perfect. we going to make mistakes. So get that out the way right now. Get that out the way. we going to make mistakes. So when you make a mistake, what do you do? Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I've sinned today. Give me strength, Lord. See, every time you slip, just say, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for I've sinned. And now get back on your horse and keep on riding, riding that walk that you want to walk. See, the devil wants you to make you feel if you slip in the sin or you fall, he or, and a devil comes in. Look at you. You know, child of God. Look at you. You just slipped. You just sinned. You might as well give up because God gave up on you. Get thee behind me, Satan. I rebuke you right now. I rebuke that thought. I rebuke that thought. I bite it. I cast out my mind right now in the name of Jesus. Get out my head. Get thee behind me, Satan. And go back to praising God because no one is perfect. He just said it. No one is perfect. Be imitators. Do the best we can. All you can do, I say it all the time, all you can do is the best you can do. And God sees your heart. Most importantly, God sees your heart. He knows you're doing the best you can. He also knows who's playing. Some people don't. Some people think it's just a playtime and they have no idea what playtime is doing to their salvation. You think, you, you, you think you're a Christian, but you plan to be a Christian. You're not living the word, you're saying the word and doing the world. Let me say that again. Some people are saying the world. They're saying the word and they're doing the world. Now, doing the world means you're not even trying to live the word. You, like I said uh, uh, last uh, yesterday, you go to church on Sunday, you're doing, you, you, you're saying the word in church on Sunday, and then you're in the world, living in the world, not even trying to control your, yourself in the world Monday through Saturday. Th 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 that's a lukewarm Christian. And there is no such thing. You're... You either following Christ or you live for, for the devil. You either following Christ or you following the devil. Which one are you doing? And see, every time we find ourselves slipping, just say, Lord, forgive me. I, Lord, forgive me. I lost it today. I, I lost my temper, Lord. Forgive me. 
help, forgive me, Lord. Give me supernatural strength to hold my peace, Lord. Help me to hold my peace, Lord, in Jesus' name. And says, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And see, and that's what you have to do. You have to do that because the world is attacking us. Everything in the world is attacking your peace. Look, look, look what's happening right now. Your peace is on attack. Your joy is on attack. Your, 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 your world, if you let it happen, your world is on attack. Because if you look at the world, you will lose all peace, all joy. Fear comes in. If you look at the world right now, you will go into complete panic mode. And that we're seeing it. We're actually seeing it right now in the world. We see panic. Just the other day, I couldn't believe it. It, 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 you may have seen it on Facebook. The other day, these two ladies went into a full-blown fight over a nine-pack of toilet paper. They went, they had the paper, they had the toilet paper, and they went into a full-blown fight over a, a, a package of toilet paper. I said, people, people, it, it ain't that serious. Yes, yes, the virus is serious, but but the stores just told you there is no shortage. What is happening? Fear. They've lost it. They've lost their peace. No joy. No, no fear has overtaken them. Fear of everything. Because if you went, if you let one fear come in, fear of everything comes with it. Not just one thing. You let one fear take over, and fear of everything. Like we talked about the other day, the phobias. I think Tanya mentioned phobia. Phobia means fear of what? And if you want to have a, since you're at your computer, if you're at your computer at home after the lesson. I want you to put in the word in Google phobias, just with phobias, and look at the thousands of fears that come up. There's there's all kinds of fears. Fears of things you wouldn't even think is a fear. And you put the word phobias in, in, in Google, and all these fears come up. Fear of stuff, I mean fear fear you wouldn't even think of. Cause fear will fear will attack you full blown. All it needs is you to give in to one fear. One. Because if you fear one thing, you're going to fear another thing, and another thing, and another thing. So that's what we think. We don't look at fear. God did not create a spirit of fear. None of the fears come from God. No fear comes from God. He did not create a spirit of fear, but of love, power, sound mind. Amen. Yes, our flesh is under attack. And our spirit, that's why we fast and pray. That's why we fast and pray. The spirit has to keep the flesh under control. If there is no spiritual control, the flesh goes crazy. Let me say that again. If there is no spiritual control, your flesh will lose it because the flesh follows whatever is being fed. Now, if you're not feeding your spirit and your spirit is not strong enough to control the flesh, the flesh gives in to everything in the world. And next thing you know, you've lost it. You say, what happened? What happened? I got disconnected. I disconnected from the source. I'm not keeping my mind stayed on him. I'm now keeping my mind stayed on the world. And now you you feel you feel the stress we see on the news all around us. Now is in your life. Why? Because you're now looking at the world and not at him. And that's why we that's why we focus on things. That's why we focus on all these things right now mentioned in this chapter. We have to keep keep on keep holding on to God's hand to keep our, our joy amen some of you have different jobs where you have to dip, deal with people in, in in like caregiving and hospice and all the times where you have to keep keep your joy and you you're trying to hold your joy while you're dealing with someone who's in a state of hopelessness and i was i was just sharing this with another fellowship member uh of, of last week when you work all day and i learned this while i visited my mother but i told you that time i went i visited my mother before she passed at that one place and the place was so negative and after you after i sat there every day with her because i stayed there with her that day for a week i was there every day for a week and my mom when my mother was staying at, the, at that first time i visited her and when i came home sister john will tell you i had a debrief i mean i broke down in tears because i was trying to be a light for my mom for the whole week because the entire place was dark and like i told you last week the entire atmosphere of that particular place was so dark when i went in just to see my mother and we go to lunch and we go to dinner but everybody else in the place looked like they were ready to die nobody had joy nobody had peace nobody was getting visitors it was almost like the family of these people 
just say, go to this assisted living place and die. I didn't see one visitor the entire time I was there for a week. And I'm, I'm feeling the heaviness. And some of them look at me. I told you I had my Jesus shirt on. So some of them look at me. They had some other spirits in them too. Some people had some other spirits in them as well. And I came home and I had a debrief. It took me a couple of days. I felt like once I left my mother, I could let, let it go. Because I was trying to stay a light for my mother the whole time I was there in the midst of all this heaviness. And when you have a job like that, those of you who have a job like that, where you work with people, caregiving, hospice, you're being a beacon. You may be the only light in those type jobs. You're the only light they see. And your light, now it's going to be a drain to you because you're trying to let the light of the Lord shine through you. And they're absorbing all your light because they have no light. And the reason you feel so exhausted is you're trying to keep your light burning and not let them take all your light. So when your day is over, you come home, oh, oh, man, why am I so wiped out? You so wiped out because you kept holding on to your joy as they were trying to absorb your joy. And see, that's that's why it's so hard. And, and when you do that, you got to give yourself. When I came home, I had to listen to Basking in His Presence. God's healing our power. I had to just focus a whole day on just God, God videos, God, my prayers, the music. I had to get that heaviness out of my spirit. And when you do it as a job, you got to do this every day. You got to go home and decompress and let the joy of the Lord come back into your life. Let the light come back in your life. You got to, you got to let that refill you so that when you go back the next day, you're not even further drained. If you don't do it every day, you get weaker and weaker and weaker and exactly just like a battery next thing you know you have no energy because you didn't refresh between days and see in this world right now we got to do this just like a, a caregiver and those of you who work in hospice we got to do this now in the world every day for the same reason because we see all the chaos every day we're around people if you, if you have to go out to the store somewhere, you feel the negativity in people, the fear in people. And you've got to keep your light. Keep your light and protect your joy. Protect your peace. Protect, protect your own sanity. Because that's why it's so important to keep your mind stayed on Him. So you can be refreshed when you finish those hours with being around negativity. Go, take the time. you got to commit to take the time to refresh Take the time. Amen, Snurk. Block, rebuke, rebuke negativity, rebuke heaviness, rebuke fear, rebuke darkness. Because if you're around darkness all day, guess what? Darkness will darkness wants to come home with you. If you're around it all day as a job, you gotta say, I rebuke that. I rebuke every dark thought right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every dark thought. I rebuke every negative thought. I rebuke every thought that's not like God. Right now, I rebuke all you spirits, name the unnamed, seen the unseen, and I cast you all out of my mind, spirit, home, family, in Jesus' name, back to the pit of hell. And we and, and then once you say that, once you rebuke, bind and cast out. Now rest. Thank you, Jesus. Refresh me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Anointing fall on me. Oh, yes, Lord. That's where, you, that's where you get your fresh anointing. Once you rebuke it, bind it, cast it out, refresh. Rebuke it, bind it, cast it out, refresh. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. I need a refreshing, Lord. Touch me right now, Lord. Oh, give me a fresh, let your fresh anointing right now come over me, Lord. We feel my joy. We feel my peace. We feel, we feel my love. Take over, Lord. Give me a fresh anointing right now. Thank you, Jesus. And just bask. Sit back like you're in a, sit back like you're in a jacuzzi. Oh, yes, Lord. I need your love. I need your peace. Refresh me, Lord. We feel me, Lord. And just take the time. Take the time. Take the time. Amen, Erica. <laughs> In the current in the current malls, you definitely have your, your joy stolen. Like I just said, that fight broke out. But just take time. We've got to learn to take time. When you feel yourself drained in the spirit, take the time to get refilled. Take the time to stand still. You got to do that. Because right now the world is draining us. Just to just to be a beacon for somebody in this world. 
that drains you if they have no joy and you try to have your light shine their lack of joy is draining your joy you try to hold your peace hallelujah thank you jesus god bless you it's so good to see you and you got your peace and they have no peace no joy and they're drawn to you they they, they attach to your joy like a like a like a lightning bug want to be recharged and they they drain you and once you come back thank you lord amen sir we talked about that we talked about that when you when you deal with somebody all you can do is comfort them if you have to turn them away and they're hurting they're sad you feel sorry for them that's your job to comfort them but you can't let that come home with you when the job when the job ends you care for them you have to talk to them and you worry about them but you can't let that spirit come home with you they're in the spirit of hopelessness and depression and you're trying to comfort them you're letting your light shine on them to comfort them this is where the drain happens you're giving everything you can to make them feel better but the real the reality is it's not going to be better yet they have to wait but you're doing everything you can to make them feel better and that's giving you you're giving them all your light trying to make them feel better but the reality is it's going to take time before they feel better and so you go home and now you're drained and you have no light because you just gave your light all you all the light you had trying to make them feel better and that's why you gotta you gotta go home and recharge that's why you gotta go home and recharge amen that, that's what that's what the being a beacon is about that's what being a beacon is about we once we finish our job we can't make people get saved we lead them to the water but don't lose don't lose your joy if they don't drink the water we can only take them to the water and tell them about the goodness of God and share your testimony. You're doing our job is to get them to the water. Whether they drink or not, whether they drink or not is not up to us. That's between them and God. That's between them and God. That's what we have to make sure. That's what we have to make sure. We don't let them steal our joy. Like that, like the perfect example I just gave you, the fight that broke out in that store. The fight that broke out in that store is the example of somebody letting that negativity take their joy because the, when you hold your peace you remember, remember there, there used to be a t-shirt remember that t-shirt back in the day it ain't that serious there used to be a t-shirt i used to see years ago it ain't that serious people it is a serious conviction but when you when you break out in a fight over something simple like that it ain't that serious there's plenty more calm down Calm down and see, this is where the, the, the lesson of the day is talking about. When you're keeping your joy and your peace, you're not letting those kind of situations steal your peace and your joy. You're just going on about your life. Okay, it ain't that serious. I'll go somewhere else and get it. It ain't that serious. I'm not about to lose my peace over something like that. No, no, take it. Take it. You have it. I'll go buy something else and, the, and, and keep my joy. The number one thing is protect your peace, your joy, your love for the Lord, and your and your connection with the Lord. All this stuff can steal your connection. It can break your connection because you go from looking at God to looking at the world. Amen? Let's turn now to Galatians. Galatians 5. It's funny that both of these are chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Now, we just talked about being imitators of Christ and, and, and all the things that are listed in chapter to five Ephesians this is Galatians chapter 5 which I figure is really great because this is reminding us to walk in the spirit the only way you can keep your light on and your beacon going is to keep walking in the spirit not the flesh the flesh the flesh wants to cut somebody out the flesh wants to go go off on somebody the flesh wants to just lose it curse somebody out that's what the flesh wants the flesh wants that we are submitting the flesh to the spirit. That's why we're fasting and praying. We're keeping the flesh under control. Now, chapter 5 is talking about how to do that. Start at verse 1. It, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject to a yoke of slavery. Behold, Paul 
say to that I, I give you so behold I Paul say to you that if you receive circumcision Christ will be no benefit to you now verse 3 verse 3 is where it starts I know that's what I'm not, no, no verse 5 start at verse 5 for though we walk through the fit though we walk through the spirit by faith we are waiting for the hope of righteousness for in Christ Jesus neither circum circumcision or uncircumcision means anything but faith working through love for if you were running well who hindered you from obeying obeying the truth now I'm reading from I'm going from five I'm reading from five I must I want you to read from chapter five to the end right now I'm going from five to uh, let's say five to fourteen now let's look look at what they just said you were running well who hindered you from obeying the truth? Now, this is what we're just talking about. You're running well means you're following the spirit. Let's just let's just use the chaos right now. We many of you have been shopping. Now, you're running well means I walk in the spirit. I walk in the joy of the Lord. I got I got my peace of God. You go into a store and somebody steals your joy from something stupid in the store. It says, Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Obeying the truth is holding on to God's word. But something in that store or uh, uh, encounter with another person, it stole your peace. And that's what we have to be careful of. We keep walking in the spirit to keep protecting our peace. Verse 7, we continue. Verse 8, this persuasion, this persuasion did not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough. A little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough. Verse 10, I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will adopt no other view but the one who is disturbing you will bear his judgment. Whoever it is, don't you worry about the other people trying to steal your joy. You just keep holding on your peace. Don't worry about them. Don't, our main focus is to not let them steal our joy. God, God's going to take care of them. Right now, we're focusing on walking in the spirit spirit and we're making sure we protect our joy we protect our peace we protect our connection with the lord and at all costs we're protecting all that verse uh, uh verse, verse 11 but i brethren if i still preach circumcision why am i still persecuted then the stumbling block of the cross has been abolished i wish that those who were troubling would even manipulate, mutilate themselves. For you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Look at that verse right there. Look at verse 13. For you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another what, what what we're talking about right now if you're trying to be a beacon and someone steals your light do not let your freedom your freedom is your love for the lord don't let them take your freedom and turn it into an a opportunity for the flesh you lose your joy and all of a sudden you cut somebody out that's your freedom you lost your freedom your freedom is your connection with the lord and you let someone steal it and now the opportunity for the flesh now the flesh goes off and where you had peace now you're upset and now you just cut somebody out or you punch somebody out because you lost your peace that's what it's talking about verse 14 for the whole law is fulfilled in one word in a statement you shall love your neighbor as yourself you shall love your neighbor as yourself now we're gonna stop right there now I want you I want you to read the rest of that chapter the, the main reason I, I read that part is because I'm tying that to our lesson for the day. If we're trying to be a beacon in the midst of chaos, protecting our joy, our peace, our connection with the Lord is our major, major priority. Because, we're, because of the chaos in the world right now, if we don't go out of the door protecting our peace, our joy, it's going to be stolen. See, we got to recognize if there was not a battle before in the spiritual warfare, there is definitely one going on right now. And the battle right now is to steal our peace, 
our joy and cause fear and chaos everywhere. And if we want to be continue to be beacons, we got to hold on to God's unchanging hand like never before to be a beacon in the time of chaos that's going on right now. And the only way to be a beacon is to stay connected. Your mind stayed on him. Like I just said, be imitators of Christ. And then, the, like I just said, walk in the spirit. See, these are the things we have to focus on like never before in order to walk as a beacon in the midst of all the chaos in the world right now. So when people see you, they know, they know what's wow. They know what's going on. They see you and they go, wow, how are you doing this? And some people, some people get curious. Some people don't. <laughs> the people, the people who are lost in the world, they don't get curious. The people who are seeking God and lost God, they, they see you and you say, well, I just focus on, I just keep my mind focused on God. And those, those who drifted, they take that light. They take your beacon and say, wow, I need to do that. See, that's how your beacon, being a beacon, affects others. If someone is a, a follower of Christ, but they look at the world and they lost the light, they see you and you say, well, I, I keep my peace because I keep the joy of the Lord. I keep my mind stayed on him. And now that person says, wow, I need to do that again. I, I lost that. What, what made them feel that? Because they see your light. They see your light and how good you feel, how peaceful you are. And they remember, I used to have that. Man, I got to do that again. And now your light just saves someone else. And you pull them back to where they should be in light. Mind focused on him. Trust in the Lord and waiting on the Lord like you talked about yesterday. See, that's how being a beacon affects other people. Now, now you're going to have people who don't know the Lord. And they're going to see your same light. And not understand anything. They don't they, they just think you're crazy. Love the Lord. What you mean don't love the Lord? What, what what's prayer gonna do? Because they have no idea what the peace of God is. And you just said, I'm I'm, I'm calm. Look at you, you stressed out. You you need God. <laughs> you you want to say that, but we can't judge. We can't judge. Some people you want to say so bad, oh you need God. <laughs> you need Jesus, but because you see them in a state of chaos and panic but we cannot judge we can just pray for them and share our testimony remember we got you can never judge somebody because if you judge somebody you turn them completely off but if you share your testimony about how how god's helping you through this time we well, you know it's some crazy times right now but what's helped me is just increasing my time with god i i read the word i listen to uh, prayers i mean it's really helped me now you're sharing your testimony a person who would have left says, wow, I never thought of that. Now you possibly just pulled another person in to become a soldier of Christ because you, you explained a testimony. You didn't judge them. You need Jesus. No, no. You say you need Jesus. They'll never take Jesus. If you say you need Jesus, they'll never come to Christ because you just judge them. And they say, well, I thought, I thought Christians don't judge. But you just said you need Jesus. You judge them. No, say to them, you know what? I know you're going through some craziness right now, but you know, you know what helped me is I just start praying more. I listen to these videos. I, I go on YouTube. I got these prayer videos, and I just play it every night. And it makes me feel so good. You you might want to try that. And they go, wow, I never done that before. And they go home and try it, and they feel the peace. Now they heard you because, like we said in the lesson earlier, a, a few months ago, the way you approach somebody. They come to God because your love is what touches them. The, your love touches them. And when your love touches somebody, they're ready to hear about Christ. If you judge somebody, they'll never come to Christ because you just judge them and ran them away. So we, as followers of Christ, hey, Lisa Marie, we, as followers of Christ, have to always remember to approach people in love and, and, and just share. That's the power of your testimony as I close. Your power is your testimony. Your testimony has power because when you speak in from what God did in your life, there's fire on it because the joy of the Lord comes out of you when you share how good God's been to you. That joy comes out of you and they get hit by your joy because you they see your face change. Man, when God came in my life, man, God touched me and I just felt this. You might break into tears and then, wow, God did that? I need to pray more. Maybe I, I need to pray more. Now, there's some people going to run from you. 
Some people will run from you. The ones in the world, they'll run from you. But the other ones who know they need it will get motivated and inspired by the same phrase. So don't, don't worry about how they react. You just be you. Share your testimony. How they react to it is how they react to it. Don't feel convicted if they run away from you because they, they're working for the devil. Just pray for them. If they hear your testimony and now they come to Christ because they're moved by your testimony and they go back to praying and lay, later down the road, they get saved because your testimony inspired them. We just keep sharing the goodness of God. We just share God's goodness in our life. Share your testimony, how good God's been to you. And whoever receives it will receive it different ways. But we're just doing our job. Spread the gospel. How good Jesus has been to me. Oh, Jesus has been so good to me. Uh, every time I walk with Jesus, it's going to be all right. Oh, you, all the different songs we sing. Just let the light of the Lord shine out of you. And that will touch somebody every single time. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this lesson today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for just the peace that you give each one of us. Lord, as we seek your face right now, every day, Lord, to keep walking that walk in love, walking that walk in joy, walking that walk in your strength, Lord. Bless this fellowship right now, Lord, as we get ready to close, Lord. Bless this fellowship wherever they are in the world, Lord, to be beacons in the midst of chaos, to let your light shine from us no matter what's going on in the world, to let your light shine through us, Lord, to be a blessing to whoever comes in contact who does not have the joy, Lord. Touch every fellowship member right now, wherever we are, that whoever comes in contact with us will feel the joy of the Lord, your love, your light, your peace emanating out of us, Lord. Flow through us right now, Lord, in this time of chaos. Flow through us and give us supernatural peace supernatural joy supernatural ability to rest in you whenever we need it Lord these things I ask for this fellowship right now live or archive on the screen or off the screen in Jesus name and right now before we close I gotta always make sure someone's listening someone's always listening who does not know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So please, no typing now as I do the prayer of salvation and closing prayer. Right now, I'm speaking to the person. I'm speaking to a person right now who's listening, who does not know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You've been listening to the whole lesson, but all you've been doing the entire time is crying, overcome by the world, overcome by fear, overcome by depression, overcome by hopelessness. You're watching this entire lesson and completely disconnected because you're looking at the world. You're not here by accident. You're not here by, you have no idea how you got here. God brought you here because he sees the, the fear and the worry in your, in your life right now. You're not here by accident. God brought you here. You may be here as a backslider, walking in guilt, for whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back into a world of sin. And now the devil's knocking you every which way but loose and telling you, you can never go back to God. Once you fail God, you can never go back. And that is a lie for the pit of hell. All have fallen short. No one is perfect. If you want to come back to the Lord, just say the prayer of salvation over again. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. Every day, Feed your spirit, starve your flesh. Feed your faith, starve your doubt. Every day, not just every Sunday, every day. And the more you do this every day, the more peace of God you'll feel in your life. Which is God letting you know, it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you, amen. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirit's retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash. And every other demonic spirit, named, unnamed, seen, or unseen. And we cast all those demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our home, out of our, our life, back to the pit of hell from which they came in Jesus' name. And before I go any further, I just set up a situation, a slight distraction. Those of us I just talking to right now, those of you I was just talking to right now, I want you to pray this with me right now. Repeat after me. If you're depressed 
and worried and walking in fear, I want you to say this with me right now. Father God, forgive me. Forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you. In Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is now right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us, to teach us, to guide us. And the more you do that, like I said before, the more peace you'll feel in your life. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, loose into fellowship, loose unspeakable joy, loose peace beyond understanding, loose restoration, Lord. Restore. Restore every area of our life. Restore our joy. Our peace of mind. Our health and well-being. Loose. Reconciliation, Lord. Bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. Bring joy back, forgiveness back, communication back, trust back to marriages and families right now who've been struggling to survive. And Lord, keep a hedge of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil still attacks every day, Lord. Loose, supernatural, healing, healing. By your stripes, we're healed. And we say it every day, Lord, I believe I've received my healing. In Jesus' name, I believe I've received my healing. In Jesus' name, see it, believe it, speak it, live it. Every day, push, pray until something happens. Loose, supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings of abundance, blessings of abundance rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship for whatever financial need, large or small, for you shall supply all our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want for anything, for the Lord is my shepherd. For we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We're blessed going in, blessed going out. We're blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God, and nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, we thank you for our miracle, Lord. We now know as a fellowship to spend time every day. See your miracle. See it every day. See it. Believe it. Receive it to your heart. And once you receive it to your heart, expect your miracle every day. Expect it by walking in it, even before it's here. We don't know the when. We will never know the when. But because we don't know when, that means any day we wake up, any day could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle we pray for. So Father God, all these things we ask, all these things we ask, in Jesus' mighty name we pray, let the fellowship say amen, amen, amen.